Hello people. So yeah, today we're going to talk about how to waste 5k, spend 5k, just kidding. But uh, we're going to go over that in just a second. The title was not clickbait. Uh, but before we do so, I wanted to address two things. So as usual, I will leave timestamps. So if you don't want the crap talk, you can just keep ahead. However, it is pretty interesting. One is about 151. It seems like I have additional information about the reprint. I'll leave you pop up a picture as I'm talking and it will be, it should be, it is a picture announcing that 151 is going to be available again on stock starting from October 4th, 2024. As you can see, it is Italian. So it is referring to Italian 151. And as I mentioned in the 151 European video, I did only talk about the info I had in the European Union. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll leave you as always the video popping up on top of my face. It is that I do have info saying that a 151 reprint English has been announced in the European Union and it looks like it's also coming in Italian. So I would expect it to come perhaps in uh, all other European languages. We'll see. But just just go look at the video. And but I mean, basically, that's what I said. I just go into more detail about what I know and what I think is going to happen. Now, that being said, number two thing I want to address on that video, I'm going to come and say that P, uh, the Pokemon company doesn't print in the EU. So I'll leave you down below in the description, the link of the Pokemon Company International itself, saying that they do print uh, English, uh, Italian, German, French, and Spanish cards, I think it was in either the United States or the Netherlands and Belgium. And then in that comment also, it said simply, uh, the guy said simply, look under a box and it'll say printed in the USA. Now, I have nothing personal. I did take the comment as a battery you need, you just need to look at under the box. Um, one, and again, I don't take it personal. There's, I mean, I personally think there's plenty of people that talk and don't really know what they're talking about. Now, the focus of this channel has always been since day one, do not spread misinformation. When I say something, I say it because I know it. If I don't know it, if I'm not sure, I will say, I'm not sure. Um, I think this, I think that I'm not sure. Now, as you said, I actually have a pretty interesting um, example to show you. So you did say, I mean, many of you, if, especially if you're American, you're going to have to, um, you probably saw this right here. This is a Paradox Rift box, English. And as you can see here, hopefully it's not uh, flipped, mirrored. It says printed in the USA. So I don't know if you can um, actually uh, focus. If not, I will leave you a picture. It says printed in the USA. So we know 100% this has been printed in the USA, which is nothing crazy. However, Paradox Rift English, it says Paradox Rift, Rick's Rift, well, it says Paradox Rift. Sorry, guys, that's my Italian uh, trying to take control. And uh, here, as you can see, it says, uh, hopefully you can see it or else again, I'll leave you a picture. It says printed in the USA and the Netherlands. So I think that will do. That being said, guys, how to spend 5K. So this is a comment I got in uh, one of the recent video, which by the way, um, lately last week, last 10 days, I got a plenty of comments. I love that. I read them all, respond them all. So just keep it coming. Uh, leave a like, dislike, comment, uh, subscribe, obviously. Uh, I mean, we're, we hit 500. Big, big thanks to you guys. And as well, check out the Discord. It's completely free. And there's the bot there that keeps track of supply, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm the sponsor of my channel, so I have to spam myself. Sorry, guys. Uh, but yeah, keep the comments coming. Um, I really enjoy them. I like reading them and responding to them. So that was my final comment. Hi, I have 4.1K USD. I'm ready to sell my initial plug investment. Uh, each one I'm thinking. So it says Los Argin Seal Booster Box Case, uh, SV151. Um, English uh, ETB case, and then another case of Tempest. Uh, what else would you spend the rest on? And what would you not suggest my list? So he said this, and then late, uh, after that, he saw my 151 video. So he immediately deleted that 151. Now, what do I think about it? Number one, that's what I think. It is not financial advice. None of this financial advice, obviously. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not registered in any country, uh, province, region, city, town, village swamp. I'm not registered. I'm not a financial advisor. This is my opinion. So what I think is the answer is it depends. 
I think that anyone that would directly answer to that question, even though saying it's, it's not financial advice, blah, 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 that's what I would do. They would probably say that's what I would do, blah, 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 blah. I think, um, I don't want to say he's an idiot, but how could you answer that if you don't know anything about the person asked? So I'm pretty, I'm 100%, I mean, not, I'm pretty sure, pretty confident that if you go to a, a registered financial advisor and you ask the same question, uh, the followings are some of the questions it's going to answer, or it's going to ask you, sorry. So I'm 98% sure not a single registered financial advisor in any country will directly respond to that question saying what to buy. If any anyone else does, I think we have a problem. So that's what my honest answer would be. Personal situation, where in your life, how old are you? They correlate, there's not much more. Well, what I mean by that? Are you um, a father of 30? Uh, are you like your family? Do you have a family? Are you the only person that brings an income to your family? That's, I think, it needs to be said. Now, that guy mentioned 4K, 5K. Is 5K like 50% of your current, let's say, cash position that you're willing to invest? How much are you willing to invest? But we'll get to that uh, later on in this video. So, all these type of questions that are necessary. How old are you? If you're 20, you're going to be most likely in a different life situation than if you're 40, 45, with a family, with children. That needs to be addressed because 4K could be, I mean, 4K could be peanuts for many people. It could be a ton of money for others. So it really depends, which is I mean, <laughs> the main theme of today's video is going to be it depends. Geography. Why? Why is that important? So I mentioned it in... Uh, I think it was my last video. Um, so it's very common as far as I know. Let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, for countries such as the US, Canada, uh, the UK even at time, but mainly US and Canada as far as I know of, that uh, you guys, yes, there, I, I'm aware of um, you know, 401k, Roth IRA. I'm aware of those uh, type of, uh, I wouldn't know how to define them. On, so I'm aware of those stuff excuse my uh, poor english um but what i mean is you don't really have um it's not common you, you perhaps it, it is uh, existing it's not common for people in those countries to have a uh, let's say public security provider so what i mean by that i'll give you an example here in italy no matter what type of job if you're you know if you have a company if you're a employer doesn't matter you have to contribute towards your social security for retirement. It's compulsory. You have to do it. There's no way in, no way out. Got to do it. Now, on top of that, you can implement it with uh, private investments such as stocks, bonds, commodities, cryptos, Pokemon, whatever the hell you want. But it is compulsory that you need to contribute part of your salary towards that. Now, that doesn't really apply to those countries I mentioned, US and Canada, it's a bit different as far as I, as I know of. And also, culturally, it's much more common because you do have some uh, fiscal advantages that are not present in countries such as Italy uh, for those type of private investments. What I mentioned earlier, Roth IRA, 401k, those give you tax advantages that are not present over here. Hence, you will be incentivized to invest, to put money towards those type of investments. That's how it works. That's why I say that, geographically speaking, it does matter to whom asked me that question, because after I know that piece of information, I will be able to give a much better educated response. Now, that being said, number three, risk tolerance. Now, those are fancy. <laughs> Finally, some math guys. Uh, I mean, I've been talking so much lately, no math. So first reaction could be, what, what the hell is that? So the first row is what you probably heard many times in some of my videos, uh, most likely in Danny Phantom's video, EV, expected value. Now, mathematically, that E right here is used for expected value. That's the symbology that it is used in the scientific world. What is P? P is a portfolio. What is this? This is a Greek letter, mu. Mu of P, expected value of P. That's usually how we like to uh, represent the expected value. We don't write EV. We usually tend to write mu of P. 
And uh, what is this? Well, this is a sum. W st stands for weight. R stands for return. Your expected value of a portfolio is going to be in what is called discrete model. It's not continuous discrete uh, when it comes to Pokemon. And I'm not going to go into that. Uh, I could I could spend hours um, talking about math. That's what I study. That's what I do. Uh, but uh, it would interest you pretty much, um, I mean, probably a very small percentage of you. Um, so obviously the expected return is going to be a sum of your individual investments. If my portfolio is composed of one booster box of Paradox and one of Fusion, the expected return is going to be a composition of equal weights because I have one and one, so half because the sum of weight must equal one, and their returns. Now, what is this? VAR, it's variance. And what is this? This is sigma square of P, which is variance of the portfolio of P. That's usually how we like to symbolize it. Now, this is pretty interesting and, and pretty fun. So this here is the expected value of the square difference of the return of the portfolio compared to its mean. Now, I understand it. You're going to be confused. I'll simplify now. Now, every time you hear uh, volatility, right, and you're in the stock market, in Pokemon market, I'm sure your favorite uh, PokeTuber mentioned volatility. I'm also pretty confident that if you ask a good chunk of them what volatility is, uh, they're going to tell you it's how much the market moves, you know, the swings. Yes, that's a good, um, you know, intuitive definition. But what is volatility? Volatility is the square root of that thing right there, the square root of variance, which is also called standard deviation. That's probably a much more common term you've heard of. And uh, standard devi volatility and standard deviation are the same thing. Standard deviation is more used in generic term. It does take the name of volatility when it comes to usually financial instruments. That's what it is. So I'm sure that from now on, every time you wake up, you're going to be, oh, I know what volatility is. Now, why is that important? Risk. Volatility is oftentimes used as a measure of risk. Can you measure volatility in the Pokemon market? Absolutely. If you have historical returns, you can measure volatility. Volatility, however, this right here is a theoretical tool. In practice, you need to estimate it. Now, that is going to be a much more complex, and I honestly and genuinely uh, want to keep it for another video, which let me know, guys, if you'd be interested to know this. This is basically trading Pokemon as a number. Basically, we're just modelizing a portfolio composed of Pokemon. Many people talk about, oh, portfolio, blah, 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 blah. What we will be doing is treat these as if it were stocks and use the same models that apply to stocks to Pokemon. You can do that. Uh, problem, I mean, the problematic part is retrieving historical data. That being said, diversification is often brought into um, the argument. Diversification basically means trying to decrease your variance, your, your standard deviation, your volatility. That's what diversification is all about. As a intelligent investor, you want to maximize return and minimize variance. Now, that is easier said than done. There are mathematical ways which do require mathemat mathematical background. And again, I don't think we're going to ever go over them in this channel. Maybe we'll, I don't know. Uh, that you can do that. You can do that. It's possible mathematically. You can prove different things. Now, all of this to say, people invest in Pokemon is oftentimes on the internet, on YouTube, being seen as an easy play. I buy this, this is going to go up, I'll make money. If that was reality, we'd all be rich, everyone would be rich, everyone would be doing it. So think about that when, um, when something is good, to, still good to be true, it just really is. So that being said, that, um, you know, the, the, the viewer the, the, from the comments mentioned three assets. So with three assets, on average, you will expect, and there's a math to, to prove this, um, again, I don't want to go over it in today's video, with three assets, on average, you will expect a higher volatility than if you had 30. It is also true that on average, you could expect greater expected returns. So to give an example, if I were to buy every booster box from the Solar Shield era when they came out against, I would buy 12 boxes of Evolving Skies, you would know 
well, would have been the better investment, the one with a greater expected return. Now, in practice, you don't know what the distribution of the return is going to look like in the future. If you knew, we'd all be rich, right? So that's why usually diversification is in place. Now, I heard many things about diversification in the Pokemon market. Many of them, um, we'll just leave it to another video. Number four, last but not least, expectation. Why are you investing in Pokemon? Are you expecting that buying booster boxes are going to make you rich? What are your expectations? Why are you doing it? Do you like Pokemon? If you do, then you might have a problem selling it. Because if you develop emotional attachments towards this piece of paper, then you might have a problem selling it. Are you going to develop emotional attachment to Nvidia stock, to an ETF on the Standard and Poor? Are you, develop, are you going to develop emotional attachment towards gold? It's usually, for the average person, less likely than to develop it for Pokemon. So I gotta be careful with that. That usually how you could end up mini minimizing your returns and maximizing your variants. Now, that being said, guys, there's many other things you can cover when talking about how to invest in Pokemon. This video is probably already uh, 15 minutes long. It's gonna be, I don't wanna make it 15 hours. However, if you're interested in this, please let me know down in the comments. I will try to go further, as well as if you're interested to know more about the math part of Pokemon investing. That being said, guys, be careful. Don't listen to anyone who tells you how to invest. Do your homework, do your due diligence, think about it. When it comes to money, it's always, when it comes to money, just be careful. Don't trust anyone, not even myself, but do subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.